In today's project, I'm going to modify the shelf for the vapor blasting cabinet. The reason I never put the shelf on is because it interfered with the way that I switched the pump on and off and was also in the way of the air hose that goes down to the foot pedal. What I decided to do today is go ahead and reinstall this shelf. The reason being is I needed to move the cabinet and this shelf adds rigidity to the legs. That way if you decide to put your vapor blasting cabinet up on wheels, this will allow you to move it without bending the legs up. So without further ado, let's get into cutting this piece of metal. All I did was just uh, tape it off and right here at the ends, about a quarter inch from the edge of this tape is the screw where the leg bolts to this bottom shelf. There is also another hole here on the side that is uh, also open. So I'm going to cut right along this line all the way down and hopefully we'll get a, a nice clean cut. I'm going to be using a Bosch jigsaw with a metal cutting blade. I'll show you that as soon as I set up the tripod over at the other table. We'll be cutting with a uh, Bosch jigsaw blade. I went ahead and taped up the bottom to minimize the scratches on the metal. And then we're using a metal cutting blade. This is uh, similar to a, a hacksaw. And it should cut through this pretty easily. Make sure you wear safety glasses when doing anything when involving cutting metal. Alright guys, let's get going. Alright guys, there you have it. Guess we could clean up the edge real quick with a file and then we should be able to reinstall it. Let me go grab that. Alright, here's what we're going to use to clean up these edges and deburr them, that way we don't cut ourselves. There you go guys, quick and easy, got a nice edge. A port cover on the back of a Harbor Freight sandblast cabinet. If you guys are interested in converting this to a vapor blasting setup, you are going to need to hook up some kind of vacuum to it. Uh, this it comes with this cover. Uh, the cover was a solid piece. I went ahead and drilled a hole using a hole saw. It was the closest size that I had to the hose end that my vacuum came with. And what I decided to do today is remake this uh, part, incorporating this adapter already on it. Okay, 
And uh, I'm going to do that is I'm going to design it in uh, on shape and then 3D print it. Uh, I've already made the part. I'm going to show you what it looks like. And I'll put a link to the STL file in case you guys want to print your own uh, version of it. So if you've ever wondered how these hose ends go on, so the, the hose end plugs into this uh, part of the hose. So you got just the, the standard raw tube, and then you have this insert. And I've always wondered how it is that this thing still can rotate, but that there's no way to pull it out easily. I mean, it's it, I had to cut it to get it to get it off. I had to cut the hose. And to give you an idea, so here here's the hose. I had to cut it to get it off. It has this. You can see here real close. It has this uh, this ridge here. This protrusion. And if you notice on one side of it, it has an angle, but on the other side, it does not. And the way that it works is it grabs onto this part of the, uh, the tube. So once you push it on there, this tube will grip that part of the ring. It will still rotate. But there's no there's no getting this off. I mean, this it it lo it really locks in place. It's something else. And I was very intrigued by this setup. And I don't plan to use my vacuum for anything other really than uh, vapor blasting. So I have no problem permanently attaching the hose to a coupler like this. However, if you guys want to be able to remove the hose, and this is just a raw hose end with with no fitting on it. You want to just be able to remove it on and off. I'll include an STL file that uh, does not have this this ridge on it. That way, you guys can just push the hose on and uh, use a uh, a wire clamp or, or some kind of way to fasten it, and then you can take it off whenever you need to use it for some other purpose. But let me show you the part that that I uh, that I came up with. So here's the the three D printed part. And I made this one in, in two pieces. Uh, this is not necessary. I went ahead and I'm redoing it out of a single print. We'll see how that one turns out. But it worked out really well as a, as a two-piece. And, and you can see compared to the original one. It's, uh, it's the same. So this uh, mimics the original... Harbor Freight uh, port cover. I'm going to take you over to the Vapor Blast camera so you guys can see how it fits and uh, what it looks like when it's all connected up. This is the, the, the back of the Harbor Freight sandblasting cabinet. And you can see it's, a, it's essentially a big rubber grommet that's back here. And the way that this adapter fits is it will um, the grommet will settle in between this this groove here, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and push this thing on. All right, so there's the adapter. Let me bring you guys over to the side so you can see it. And now the vacuum tube will just push directly on there and it will not come off with this ridge. I had all kinds of problems with the way I had it before with it slipping out while I was in the middle of blasting apart for a long time. Very annoying. That's it. So now this thing is permanently on there. It's not going to slip off. And it looks real neat. The, the seal is made up of several separate sections. And as you can see, over time from using it, you start having, it starts shifting and you start having issues. And I've never really been happy with the design of this. Uh, I've tried taping it all up, 
to cover all of these holes. There's spaces where the tape is trapping media. And if you're switching out media on a regular basis to etch glass or to remove coatings and then you're going back to polishing, you don't want to have any garnet or some aggressive media making its way into your extra fine media when you're trying to polish something. And that's that's a source of uh, frustration for me with, with the way that this is. I'm going to try and see if I can figure out a better way to uh, eliminate all of this and make it to where it's easy to clean, media doesn't get trapped, and it seals properly. So I'm going to get started by removing all this uh, tape and patch jobs that I've done here over, over the years and see if we can't find a better way to seal this thing up. So you can see why you got to have something covering the door, either a piece of plastic, some tape, something, because media will get trapped in all of these little holes. I'm not sure exactly what Harbor Freight was thinking when they designed this thing, but uh, it doesn't make any sense to have all these open areas where media can get trapped and it's difficult to clean out. I'm going to go ahead and remove the bottom section next and show you the issues that they have with that little lip on the bottom. When you first get your Harbor Freight sandblasting cabinet, it's going to have this, this uh, protrusion here on the bottom of the, the, the door lid. And I think what, what they were intending to do was deflect the material uh, that, you're, that you're using inside the cabinet away from this from this little uh, ledge here. The problem is, is not, it's not long enough. So what happens is, you can see it's not long enough, and then what winds up happening is that media accumulates there, and then when you open the door, you got media and water and stuff uh, spilling out all over the place. Uh, what I did by making that uh, plastic cover is set it up to where the plastic cover winds up on this side of the bar. So any media and stuff that hits the, the door will slide down into the plastic cover and away from this ridge, uh, minimizing how much buildup of water and media you, you get here. But uh, I've never really been happy with this whole thing. I'm going to see if I can come up with something something better, a different solution. But for now, I'm going to address the, the seals. Uh, I'm going to try to cut this out of one piece of material. I'm going to use uh, some uh, yoga mat that I have left over that's about that thickness. And I'm going to cut it as one one big piece without all these seams. These seams are, uh, are, are terrible. They're no good. All right, guys, let me go ahead and take this door off, and then we'll start working with the yoga mat. All we're going to do now is trace it out on the yoga mat. We're going to need a utility knife, some kind of a... Uh, cutting device and a yoga mat and all I'm going to do is put it directly on the yoga mat and just use its edge to cut along it So then we got a one piece gasket. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut along the inside about uh, three quarters of an inch. So I'll go ahead and mark this up with a ruler three quarters of an inch and just cut inside that line. All right, so this fits perfectly in here. I'm going to use this as the, the guide and just run it along. I'll cut along the inside of this piece. So I'll use the edge as my guide and cut along the inside. That's it. Now all we gotta do is 
test fit it, make sure it fits okay. Looks good. So now what we're going to do next is uh, glue it using some contact cement. What we'll be using is just some Wellwood contact cement and a little foam brush. We're going to need to apply it to both sides. So I'm going to start with this part. And it doesn't have to be real heavy or anything. Just uh, get some on there. Get it all on here. We're going to set it aside and let it uh, dry almost completely to where it's just barely sticky because the glue will stick to itself. But once it's tacky, it'll 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 form a good bond. And then all we got to do is just press down on it to get it to, to stay. I'm going to set this up over here. gasket. Now we just want to let it sit, get just barely tacky, and we can stick it on. I'm going to pause the video and come back as soon as it's ready. Okay, it's been a few minutes, and it's just slightly tacky. What I'm going to do next is uh, move the side panel back over to the table, and I'm going to use these little strips of wood to hold uh, the yoga mat up off of it until we get it in the right position to start gluing it there. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start off maybe with this top corner first and then we'll work our way work our way to uh, down into the sides. So there we have it. We got a one piece gasket. All we got to do is just reassemble it. If you got any little bits that need to be trimmed off, now would be a good time. Right, I'm going to have to think about what I'm going to do with, these, with this area here with the holes. Uh, I may just pick up on this video tomorrow. But for now, we got the gasket ready to go. And then this is just a piece of linoleum that I picked up on sale at uh, Home Depot. I'm holding this on with some contact cement and this is working really well. This little flap goes on the inside here so that when the door is closed and you're blasting inside, the water that, that, that hits the door just rolls right off that skirt. Uh, without it, what'll happen is it'll build up on that ledge that's underneath there and then uh, ca cause you problems. Another thing too that worked out really well is uh, using the yoga mat again for this because I got rid of all the seams in the original uh, foam gasket that it came with and uh, another thing another tip that I can give you it's very important to shim this so if you put some kind of like a thin shim on this it will move the door closer to the cabinet that way there's no gaps so there's no gaps at all uh, all along this, uh, this 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 thing here 
And if you look underneath, let's see if I turn the light on so you guys can see a little bit better. So if you can see underneath, there's no uh, there's no gap. The the water and splash and mess that I get is every time I open the cabinet, whatever water is on the door or on the gasket will just spill out. Anyway, that's something that I got to figure out how to resolve. But for the most part, it works really well. I uh, went ahead and reinstalled the lower shelf. The reason I did that is to stabilize the legs. I needed to move the cabinet the other day. And I was unable to do it because I didn't have the uh, rear shelf. That allows this airline to uh, to drop down. So that goes to my foot pedal. And then from the foot pedal, it comes up and uh, back into the cabinet. And then the hose from the pump, again, if I had the shelf here, it, it would be a problem. I would have to bring it up and over. So this way, it just goes right along here. Another thing I'm thinking about doing is uh, building some type of little bracket to hold this to hold this up off the shelf. That way, I can clean up that shelf whenever water and debris and mess get in there. And this is not from uh, leaking from this this uh, joint. What this is is media and water that spill out every time I open the door uh, when when pulling parts out. There's still water and there's still media trapped on the door itself and in between the gasket. Anyway, that, that's the only messy part about this. Uh, honestly, if, if I was to to build my own version of this, which I'm considering doing because I'm interested in polishing some of the wheels on uh, my Evolution 8. What I may do is, instead of using a side door like this, I'm going to have the whole top of the cabinet open, which will eliminate all this leaking and all these issues because when you open it, it's just going to run down into the cabinet as opposed to dealing with this door on the side. I, really, I never really liked it. Unfortunately, uh, having the cabinet flip up is going to make it take up more of the space so i'll have to maybe relocate the cabinet somewhere else that way when i do open it uh it has the space behind it to to tilt back well finally i found a glass manufacturer locally that sells plate glass in quarter inch and i had them cut this piece out it's uh 12 by 24 inches and uh this is what i'm going to be replacing the current glass with so let, let's get started i'll show you uh the current setup the way it is so this is the, the, the dual glass window that I currently have on the unit. And uh, I want to get rid of that uh, double glass setup and go to a single quarter inch. So let me set you guys up on the tripod. We'll take that apart. And while we're in there, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade one more thing. And I'll show you guys what that's going to be in a second. Glass number one, and then glass number two. And then my wife's yoga mat keeps getting smaller. This is, this is another thing that you guys might want to consider doing is pick yourself up a, a yoga mat and cut out one solid uh, piece of gasket. If you do this, it's not going to leak. I have had zero leaks since I went to uh, using the, the yoga mat. All right, so let me show you on the inside one of the other upgrades that I want to make. So until now, what I've been using on the inside is this... Uh, this cover here to cover that air intake and let me show you where it is All right so you got this air intake over here and to this point what I've been using is let me turn on the light guys so you guys can see so what I've been using until now has been this uh, plastic cover here so I had this taped in place and that was keeping water from getting out of that uh, intake port when I was blasting because most of the time I'm doing my blasting from right to left and this is right right where my water jet is it's splashing water all in all in this direction 
and uh, and, and a lot of times it, it makes its way out of that hole. So check out uh, something that I decided to do, and I'll go ahead and load these files up. So if you guys have a 3D printer, you can print them yourselves. But what I made is, so this is what I made here. And uh, what this is, is, and I had to print it out of two pieces because my 3D printer is very small. But uh, what this is going to do is, it's going to go on the inside, and it's going to angle down. Let me show you. Okay, so it's going to go like this. Just like that. So it takes up a lot less space, and uh, media is not going to collect all, all around all the edges and stuff. So I think that's going to be better. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, set it up i already drilled the two holes here on the bottom so you can see them so this thing has four holes it's got one two up here these are going to use the existing holes that are there and then i got two on the bottom that are going to go uh down here another cool thing that i did is uh all right so i removed i removed the light set up inside the cabinet altogether. So there was a light in here. I took that thing completely off because all it was doing was just gathering media and making a mess. And then I also took the light control box off as well. And if you notice, I got these these little black these little black plugs for the holes. And I'm also going to do the same thing with uh, these two lower holes here. So I got uh, a couple little plugs that I'm going to use for that. And let me show you how I made those. So here's what we got. So these are a couple of 3D printed little uh, caps that I made. Again, I'll include these uh, the links to these files. That way, if you guys want to make your own, you can. And let me show you how they work. So here, I'm not going to be using these these two holes at all. I'm going to be putting a screw here, another one over here, and then one on each one of these. So these can just get can just get capped, and all you got to do is just push the little cap on and that's it right so I got a little 3d printed cap to cover up these little holes get this one on and that's it so it's nice and neat it looks tidy and uh, water won't get out through those holes now all right let me set you guys up uh, back up on the tripod and uh, I'll get the new piece of glass Alright guys, let me show you how that came out. So now I got my my uh, water deflector there. That way water doesn't come out that hole. This is what it looks like on this side. And there are the two caps. Another thing I wanted to show you is the uh, vacuum adapter in the back. So I 3D printed that one as well. And I have more details on that. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll add it to this video. That way you guys can see it. And if you like, you can print one up yourself. Right, let me put you back on the tripod and we'll get working on the glass. Right, when you're going to replace your glass, just make sure that you clean up your uh, gasket again. That way you're not getting a bunch of glass trapped between the gasket and your new piece of glass. And then just put it back on. I'm also thinking about doing something with the uh, lighting. So if you guys have any ideas on maybe a strip light or something attached to this inside of this frame, I don't know. If you guys have any ideas, uh, shoot me a comment. That way you can try to inspire me to do something with this. 
the light setup on the top works well, uh, but sometimes it gets in the way, especially when you're working on a large part. I recently did a valve cover, and uh, the, the light was in my way. I kept battling with moving it around to try to get the right view on the part I was working on. So if I can open up my, my, my view space by hiding the lighting within the frame, that would be awesome. That's it, guys. So there it is all uh, put together. It's got the single glass in it. Let me go ahead and turn the light on so you can see how bright it looks like on the inside. Right, so now it's nice and bright, super clean. Yeah, I'm really excited about using it. I don't think I don't think it's ever looked that that good. All right, guys, if you enjoy the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, again, I I appreciate all the support, all the comments. Thank you so much. I'll post all the links to all the files that I talked about here in this video. That way, if you guys want to three D print your own plugs, vacuum adapter port for the back, or uh, know uh, the details on the uh, yoga mat and the door and all that. Turn on your notification bells and share the video. Appreciate it, guys. God bless. Thanks again. See you soon.